Aloha. Welcome to the Mr. G podcast. Today is episode 49. We're going to be talking about a little Indiana Jones, a little basketball, a little Wimby slapping Britney action, and just whatever we feel like talking about. Uh, today is Aloha Friday, uh, July 7th, 2023. I'm coming to you from the outskirts of Chinatown in Honolulu, Hawaii, where it's a warm 79, 80 degrees. And it's an honor to be here, the Mr. G Podcast, the Mr. G Hawaii Podcast, the Gregory Brandt Podcast is available wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Audacity Podcasts. Listen to it on your way to work, on your uh, while you're at work, while you're at home. Uh, the Mr. G Podcast, new episodes daily are uploaded in their entirety onto Spotify, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Um, like I said uh, in the news today, we got uh, Brittany slapping Wimby, or excuse me, Wimby slapping Brittany. Actually, Wimby's security guard slapping Brittany Spears. And I don't normally follow pop culture type material, uh, <clears throat> but this particular story, I've talked about Victor Wimbenyamba, a.k.a. Wimby, the number one draft pick for the San Antonio Spurs uh, professional NBA basketball team. But um, I've talked about him on the podcast before. And Britney Spears, uh, I just had the biggest crush on her growing up. She's about my age. And so uh, I've always had, you know, a special place in my heart for Britney Spears. And uh, just like, you know, uh, you know, when I was a teenager, she was a teenager, too. And uh, I just always thought she was just a sweetheart. And she still is a sweetheart. There's, I know a lot of conspiracy theories about, you know, she's a different person and this and that. Or, or you know, she's made some questionable TikToks that are are you know uh alluring to her uh her sanity um but uh questionable questioning her sanity i should say but uh she is still a sweetheart and recently she was in the news because uh she was at a uh, probably a five star restaurant in las vegas that also victor wimbenyamba of the san antonio spurs was at and uh it's interesting because of not just for the pop culture aspect, but because of the celebrity aspect and how Victor Wembanyama is the most hyped uh, for, for first year. He's never played a minute in the NBA and he's still on every like NBA promo and stuff. He like starts every NBA promo and he's just like a marketer's dream. You know, he's going to be the spokesperson of Nike, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, he has a great smile, great face, great personality, and he's also seven foot five, you know, and so, you know, there's already people like uh, with the cu cu cutouts being sold on eBay and on Amazon with uh, people trying to find somebody taller than Victor Wimbanyamba. I saw another meme of like, his hands are so huge, he can juggle basketballs. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> He'd be a celebrity just then if he didn't play basketball. He can juggle, juggle three basketballs like they're like golf balls. And I saw a meme of like, what's and somebody could put different items in his hands. What's it like Victor Wimbanyamba holding a soda? And then they had him holding a soda can and it was like that small. And then I saw another meme like, what's it like standing next to a giraffe, you know? And so it's just uh, Shaquille O'Neal was a, a, a huge icon and I grew up. Uh, when I was like 10, 11, 12 years old, Shaquille O'Neal was in his rookie season. And that was just the coolest thing for a basketball fan. And he was a marketer's dream for Pepsi and and Reebok and uh, any anywhere else that he wanted. And uh, you see the same thing with Victor Wimanyamba, except Victor's even more um, soft. I shouldn't say soft. He's more well-spoken. He doesn't have like a little, like uh, Shaq's a great guy uh, and he's very comical, but he's... Uh, somewhat awkward at times and he has that deep voice and he's just like awkward and everything uh in his daily life but not necessarily because i shouldn't say that because I, I i'm just thinking of shaquille and i saw a recent clip of him and he was like at an alternative rock concert and he was just like you're fitting right in with the crowd so uh i don't know but uh victor Wimbanyama, the point is he's the hot celebrity he's the it guy and Britney Spears, I'm sorry, babe, you're a sweetheart, but you're not it anymore. You used to be it. Britney used to be the number one topic of every morning radio host. And I remember these scumbags in San Antonio, I think it was 99.5 Kiss. They had this radio show. And like the day that Britney Spears turned 18, they had like a party or something like she's legal. And I was like, ah, that's so fucking tasteless. That's so San Antonio. 
Well, no offense. I'm big. Go Spurs. Go Spurs. But uh, those some of those radio shows are just toxic as fuck. And that they started with the most toxic Howard Stern. I don't know what, how he still has a job, uh, but that guy and as well as others, toxic, uh, crappy motherfuckers. But uh, no offense, no offense, no offense, San Antonio, no offense. But um, but the news is like uh, Victor Wembanyama was at a Las Vegas restaurant. He's leaving the restaurant, and Britney Spears witnesses say she was using an English accent for I don't know why. But apparently she was uh, trailing behind Victor Wembanyama, and he's seven foot five, so he's easy to spot. And and Brittany was uh, in sunglasses and with her blonde hair and a nice summer dress, and she was chasing behind him. And um, she says that uh, she had previously seen him at, at another hotel and at another event, and then she saw him again in the evening. And then so she just went up to him and tapped him on the back. And as soon as she tapped him on the back, one of his security guards just uh, slapped her in the face, knocked her sunglasses off of her face. And she was just appalled. And her and her uh, group just uh, left and uh, left uh, distraughtly. And uh, in her response, they asked Victor Wimbenyamba about it at practice the next day. And Victor uh, had a little different story. He said that uh, he was walking and somebody grabbed him from behind and he didn't even know who it was and he just kept walking and then his security guard uh pushed them out of the way and he said he didn't know with how with how much force so he had a prepared answer that the spurs organization gave them and this isn't even a big controversy he didn't do anything at all uh you know he was just being himself you know walking um you know so there's nothing on him at all but uh the his security guard uh, he sh was probably too aggressive in my opinion Brittany's response was that she never grabbed him and that she just tapped him. And when you look at the when you look at the evidence, Britney Spears is five foot three. Uh, Victor Wembanyama is seven foot three. That's a two foot difference. So it would be pretty hard for her to tap him on the shoulder unless you know she had a you know 20, 30 inch vertical. I'm just doing the math here. And so she probably tapped him on the waist, which probably could have, you know, if somebody taps you on the waist, it kind of feels like somebody's grabbing you. And uh, but the overall thing is uh, she was kind of embarrassed, understandably so, because in the in the hindsight of things, Victor Wembanyama is the star, the the hot player, the one that's going to get all the Twitter followers, the one that everybody's talking about. And if anybody's talking about Britney Spears, it's usually not in the best light. It's usually like, oh, she made a, a strange TikTok and uh, this or that, or she's you know dressing inappropriately for a woman of her age which I've heard that as well, but she can dress any way that she wants. And uh, she's still a, a, a good person and uh, shouldn't be uh, compared to, you know, how she looked 20 years ago or, or how she was 20 years ago. And I see the same thing uh, with Paris Hilton. Uh, they're both like decent, good people. And, uh, you know, so, so, uh, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. And uh, Paris Hilton is still like in a real hot, Econo <laughs> she's still hot uh, what's the <laughs> she's still a hot accommodation <laughs> that Paris Hilton uh Brittany yeah she's she's kind of worn out at the used furniture store but that Paris she's still a hot commodity that's the word I was looking for she's a hot commodity that Paris Hilton no uh so uh it, it's it's kind of sad but in Brittany's response she was like I've been approached uh, dozens of times in the last 20 years, sometimes by 10, 20 people. I'm always approached. I was just approached the other day by a group of people and they were crazy, you know, and she's like trying to defend it because she doesn't want to look like, oh, the washed up 90s celebrity tried to get in a picture with a new hot 18 year old NBA, NBA star. And it's kind of like, whoa, you know. I remember when Madonna kissed Drake and then Drake on stage for some event and Drake was so rude about it. He's like, it eh, grows. I don't want to kiss Madonna. And it's not the same thing, but Victor women Yamba is 19 years old and Britney Spears is about my age. So she's around 40 years old. Uh, so 19 and 40. And, and that's the way it is. Madonna's must be <laughs> 60 or 70. I'm sorry, Madonna, but you've been around for a while. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I wish them all very well, especially Madonna. I heard her health isn't a hundred percent. Something probably to do to uh, you know a medical uh, uh, 
non non approved by the FDA procedure possibly, but uh, can't get into that too much. Uh, once again, Mr. G Podcast, listen to it wherever you listen to podcasts. You can just subscribe to it on Spotify or Amazon or Google Podcast or Apple Podcast, and then you get new episodes every day of the Mr. G Podcast. And um, the last two episodes we were talking about Indiana Jones. And I saw the Indiana Jones movie twice and I kind of enjoyed it. Obviously I fell asleep during the second time, but um, yeah, it was the woke indie is what it's called, I guess. But I didn't think it was that horrible. I liked the historical factors with Archimedes. I thought the action scenes, especially the opening action scenes with a young Indiana Jones were really good. Uh, they had a lot of the tr Indiana Jones tropes with, uh, lots of creepy crawly bugs. There were uh, a scene with lots of eels. Uh, there was buried treasure. There was a train scene, a plane scene, a car chase scene. And uh, I overall enjoyed the movie. There were a few unnecessary woke scenes. And I understand this movie was edited and re-edited and re-edited for uh, of over like a year and a half. And I can see that because they added like a bunch of unnecessary characters and uh, unnecessary dialogue and just like unnecessary like uh wokeness agenda like bullshit that people are going to look back like why did they put that in there and like oh there was a time uh back in 2022 and everybody was just crazy and trying to like have their own agendas and everything but um but it wasn't as bad as some of the uh youtube videos i've seen maybe on my youtube feed it just has like like right-wing conspiracy things i don't know but they were acting like the new indiana jones movie was just the wokest most horrible thing ever it's just like indiana jones has a down syndrome you know indiana jones is a transvestite you know it's <laughs> what is it what is indy's pronouns and uh none of that was actually true they had it like a new short round character and um uh, and and I thought that character was pretty good. He at, at the final scene, he like goes back in time and uh, chases them in a plane. And I've never seen a, a chase scene where a smaller plane is chasing a bigger plane, especially through dimensions. So that was you know pretty clever. You know, I was expecting to see like the new short round be like some gay little new gay character like a gay little boy hey indy where's your whip <laughs> hey indy are we gonna have tranny story time <laughs> you know but uh, the new short round was pretty cool he was like intelligent and stuff and not not that i have anything against you know gay little boys or gay men or anything but personally i'm just not a fan of dicks all right every time i've i've seen one it's just like ah like what the fuck is that you know like I've only had traumatic experiences around penises, to be honest. And and that's just, you know, it's been in like county jail or boot camp. And like, I just imagine like a bunch of penises, like, ah, like 10 penises, like, ah, like one on monsters. Ah, get him away. Get him away. Ah. You know, at least, you know, I have a, a, a very nice, handsome penis, you know, it has a full head of hair. It's, uh, you know, very good looking, you know, you would stand out in the crowd. But, uh, Overall, I'm just, you know, not a fan of dicks. And uh, every every time I've been one, it's been a traumatic situation. Like, like I, for instance, in boot camp. And and uh, that's one of the... <laughs> I'm getting nervous here with all this talk about the dicks. But uh, in boot camp, uh, you know, I remember uh, having to shower with like 10... Well, there was 50 boots there. And we each had two two minute, three minute showers. And so we all showered at the same time. And uh, I remember just being in there... And in the shower, and one of the stupidest things I ever said, the worst joke that I ever made in my entire life came at that moment. And I don't know what the hell I was thinking, all right, to have said this. But I was 18 years old, granted, I was in like an adult jail with adult men and everything. But we we're in there in the shower, and we each had our own separate like shower ho hose, and we each had our own separate soap and everything. And one day I'd only been there for like a week. Uh, we were just in the shower and I just like dropped my soap. And for some fucked up reason, I thought it would be a good joke, a good idea to be like, oh, look, guys, look, fellas, I dropped my soap. 
But the second it came out of my mouth, I just knew it was the worst thing I could have ever said. <laughs> the worst joke. You talk about a joke that doesn't go over well. <laughs> this joke did not <laughs> go over well. And I knew it so fast that while I reached down to pick up the soap, I'm thinking, shit, I hope that joke didn't go over well. I hope nobody rapes me. <laughs> But I pick up the soap and then it's like some guys looking at me like you shouldn't have fucking said that. You know, I'm like, doo, 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 doo. it's just a joke, boys. <laughs> you know, don't look at me any differently. But the people that were right around in the vicinity of the shower during that joke, they did look at me differently for the entire time that I was there. But also, um, I, this was after I had been there for a week. But on my first day there, like um, this was zero tolerance boot camp, an adult like jail boot camp thing, right? That they closed for widespread corruption. But uh, while I was there, the first day there, they had you wear uh, white, whitey tighties briefs. Uh, and I had only worn boxers up to this point in my life. So I hadn't been used to briefs. And so when I got out of the shower and they had just like sliced my face, so I got blood coming down my face too. And they just shaved my head and uh, thrown like powder on me and shit. And, uh, so I put on my my whitey tighties, but I put them on backwards to so the slits in the back. And then like I get in there and everybody's like pointing and laughing. They're like, hey, look, it looks like a fun night tonight. <laughs> looks like the new fish is going to have some fun, you know. And then I'm like, everybody's I'm like, what is wrong? <laughs> what is, am I losing my mind? You know, what is going on here? Why are they all laughing? And nobody says anything. Like everyone's like half of them are speaking Spanish. Like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what the fuck? And then the, the drill sergeant, the guy in charge of everybody, he's like, oh, what are you doing? You're underwear on backwards. And he has like this baton and stuff. And he's like acting like he's going to hit, hit me. And he's like, turn your underwear right now. Turn them around. And then so I'm right, like, right, 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 we're in like the dormitory area when he's yelling at me. And then so I'm like, oh, shit, I got them on backwards. Better turn them around. And I pull in my pants right there in front of everyone. He's like, nothing here. And he starts chasing me around the baton. I'm like running with like my underwear down and my, my ankles running to the showers. Like, oh, shit. I hope this guy doesn't beat me to death. And then like, and the, the boots are just going crazy, just laughing and shit. And so then you can see why leading up to that joke on the shower. So, hey guys, I dropped my soap. Did not go over well. But I ended up spending 64 days in zero tolerance boot camp. I made a few uh, videos about it a long time ago. Uh, they're on YouTube. Uh, if you want to uh, look at it, it's called my four months in jail. But uh, it was a really fun it was a really fun experience. I had 64 days because I only was supposed to be in the zero tolerance boot camp for 60 days, but I was extended four days uh, because of what I talk about in the story. After that one night, uh, the first day uh, where I had the underwear on backwards and everything, I'll tell you a little bit more of the story. I, I went to sleep in the uh, in the boots in the, and at night and everybody turned the lights off and everything. And I'm just laying there and like, we're in a, a dormitory with like 50 other like criminals and so and i was the only misdemeanor there everybody was there like for hardcore felons and uh one of the boots like across one of the people there across the dorm was like winking at me and stuff and i'm just like what this was it was the worst day of my life and i had blood you know, you know huge scar on my face from when they cut me that one of the boots when they were like they were supposed to shave you and one of them just came up and just like sliced my face this guy named boo willow that had all this acne scar but anyways that night i'm just laying there i'm like i'm not gonna really get through this i'm like fuck that i i cannot do this and i realized i'm like i'm, like, I'm already in, like in jail what, what, how are they gonna make me do this can't they just send me back to jail and then so i got up right then in the middle of the night and was like i quit i don't want to do this shit and i like started causing a ruckus turn on the lights you know that took a broken a plastic chair they had like a one-way glass i'm like banging on the glass and they put me in solitary confinement for four days. So that's where that four days of the 64 days comes from. And for, for four days, I was in solitary confinement. And it was just a real strange period, those four days. But I remember singing that song, Bohemian Rhapsody. I'm just a poor boy. Nobody loves me. It is just and, and the, It was just a crazy experience. And then I go into detail about what exactly happened. But I end up getting out of there. And I start my time in boot camp over and I uh, do my 64 days in boot camp and I get out and I'm like all super strong, super fit. 
all, all about ready to join the military. And um, it was really an interesting experience, zero tolerance boot camp. Uh, I think about that a lot and I think about the lessons that I learned there. And I can guarantee you the majority of everybody that I went there with, uh, they probably didn't get their lives together. And majority of them were probably repeat offenders. And uh, I, I doubt any of them had much success. But I remember a lot of different things each of them said. Having a memory like mine, that occasion is blessed. Because even though I was only there 64 days, I could literally tell you 500 different stories of those 64 days. I could probably tell you something that happened on each day of those 64 days. So sometimes my memory, it's uh, having a great memory like mine is a curse, as they say, for lack of a better word. But sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's a blessing. So, um, yeah. All right. I hope uh, everybody enjoyed today's podcast. Uh, cutting it a little short today. And um, new episode tomorrow. Uh, everybody, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, my new material as well. I'll have some more material, more jokes for you tomorrow. And um, remember, uh, listen to the Mr. G podcast. Uh, the majority of all podcasts, three-fourths of them are between 20 and 30 minutes long. About, about 60, 70% of them are between 20 and 30 minutes long. Uh, so that's what I'm doing. They don't have new episodes daily. I provide a new episode every day. Uh, so that's something that's pretty original. And that's something other people can't, aren't capable of doing, even the best writers in the world. I'm also writing a new essay every day. Uh, it's a, a make-believe class is what it is. And in this class, there's 100 people. And out of these 100 people, there's only one assignment in the class. And in that class, the only one assignment is you have to write a personal essay about anything that you want, but a new one every day. And you also have to write, you have to write the essay and you also have to read the essay and upload the essay to a social media platform all in under 30 minutes time. So from beginning of writing to reading it out loud to uploading it. And each essay should be between three and five minutes long. And that's the only assignment. And there's a hundred students in the class. And out of those hundred students, only 10 of them are getting A's. And this is an upper division honors college university of texas course so out of those 10 a's i'd put money that i'm one of the people that are getting the 10 a's and a i may not be getting millions of dollars or thousands of viewers but i am uh, really uh, leaving something uh, for the ages everybody have a great day my name is gregory brandt mr g and for me and the Street Cats, we bid you Aloha Friday. Shoots.